Chapter 4 Teaching Composition Teaching composition means, first, teaching good writing. Its purpose is not to produce professional writers, but to enable every person to write clearly and intelligibly. Second, good writing is clear thinking. Muddled thinking and writing is a headache in every area of life. The Christian school in particular should be most productive of good writing and clear thinking if it is intelligently faithful to its biblical foundations. Third, the purpose of punctuation and good grammar is to further clear thinking, and hence there is a necessity for an increased emphasis here. Thoughts without words is impossible for man. Thought implies structure, order and words. Words give expression to ideas abstractions, collective thinking and constituent aspects, so that thinking is a verbal skill. Grammar then gives structure, intelligent sequence, and temporal order to word arrangements. The word grammar comes from the Greek graphene, to write. Thoughts means words, and words mean ideas, structure. One of the names of Jesus Christ is the word or logos, meaning the structure or word of life. The Arian idea of a wordless God was in actuality an affirmation of the death of God, so I point out in the Foundations of Social Order. Many today oppose the idea of propositional truth. Truth cannot be reduced to propositions, they claim, so that all creedal statements are invalid. To deny propositional truth is to deny all truth and to affirm a meaningless universe in which blind forces hint at but never attain any meaning. As Christians, we must affirm not only propositional truth but that words are miniature propositional truths. Words are aspects of a reality and a means of assessing, weighing and measuring truth. It should not surprise us that a humanistic era not only denies God but affirms the relativity of all things other than man, its only truth. For us, however, thinking is revelational of God who made us in his image. Thinking proceeds from thought and knowledge is born from knowledge. We cannot explain the taste of strawberries to a man who has never tasted them. We can understand the nature of all reality because the God who made us made all things else and the knowledge of him, and through him of all things, is written in our being. St. Paul says that God justly condemns all men, whether or not they have heard the gospel. Quote, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Romans 1, 19-20 If we deny meaning, truth, propositional truths, at any one point in the universe, we then deny it all, and we deny God as creator. Language is not only basic to our creation as God's image bearers, but as the medium of God's revealed word to us. Language is thus very important in the sight of God. Hence, the abuse of language to blaspheme rather than to serve the Lord is a very serious offence. To abuse language is to mistrust an instrument given by God, used by him to communicate with us to reveal himself, and ordained to be our most conspicuous and central aspect of the growth and development of a godly culture. Language is thus important and grammar and composition are basic to the teaching of language. The teaching of language, far more than the teaching of logic, is the teaching of sound and logical thinking. A paragraph is a body of thought. Its structure is a unity in terms of an idea, concept or datum. The paragraph must be logical and consistent. It cannot be a false syllogism. A false syllogism is a product of careless thinking rather than deliberately false thinking. The following is a false syllogism. Man is a two-legged animal. A chicken is a two-legged animal. Therefore, a chicken is a man. 
This illustration tells us something about a false line of thinking. It begins with a limited and faulty premise. The modern evolutionary perspective on man and all things else gives thinkers a false premise. In our conclusion, the statement, Therefore, a chicken is a man, is obviously wrong. But most false syllogisms are not so clearly obvious. The thinking of modern man, resting as it does on man-centred premises, consistently winds up with erroneous, if sophisticated, conclusions. Our thinking must begin with God-centred premises and procedures in order to gain a sound conclusion. In all sound thinking, there are sound premises. Marcel Duchamp, earlier in this century, attempted to create a language which would dispense with God and meaning with propositional truth and finally abandoned the effort as impossible. Any sound view of language and writing must rest on the premises Duchamp sought to eliminate. Thought must precede writing. Thus, compositions dealing with ideas are far more useful than what I did on my vacation. It is far better to deal with why capital punishment and should schools have corporal punishment? Copying is good discipline. Students who go to reference books and copy somewhat altered materials therefrom are usually the better students. Condensing encyclopedia articles is good training. It requires getting to the heart of a matter, seeing essentials and tracing the best sequence of thought. The teacher can mimeograph magazines and encyclopedia articles and ask all the students to condense the articles as a good writing exercise. Oral composition is excellent training. Talking is composition. I'm a writer. My talks are compositions. I was trained in both oral and written composition and profited from it. Oral composition requires us to face the results of our thinking in their audience impact. Its style is different from a writing style, but the necessary ingredients are the same having something to say and saying it clearly and ably. Students can be asked to give how-to talks on their interests, how to bake bread, solder, etc. How-to writing is also good. Sentence structure is important. Outlining an essay, locating topic sentences, parsing, etc. all need to be taught. Biblical exegesis is excellent training in good thinking and writing. A proverb from scripture such as Proverbs 13.24 and 28.4.9 can be used as the first sentence of an essay to develop and explain its meaning. The study of words is important so that they can be used precisely. An unforgettable episode in my own learning as a university senior was when I once used the word raised in an essay and spoke of myself as having been raised. Professor G. Dundas Craig, an excellent teacher of composition, smiled and said, Mr. Rushdoony, children are reared and pigs are raised. Children should be assigned words to look up and write about their history and meaning using the second unabridged edition of Webster's Dictionary or the Oxford Dictionary. The goal is not creative writing, but good writing.